or seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Now, in order to understand what ministry is he talking about in context, we have to go back to chapter 3. So he's saying, therefore, seeing we have this ministry. What ministry is he talking about? Look at uh, verse 6 of chapter 3. Who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament. This is where he mentions ministering. You know, if you, if you go back in context, ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. He's talking about preaching the gospel, the new covenant, the new testament in Jesus Christ. This is the ministry. So verse 1 in chapter 4 says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, this is our work, this is our ministry, this is what we need to do. As we have received mercy, we faint not. He's saying we don't stop, we don't faint, we don't fall over. Why? Because as we've received mercy, God saved our souls. God's been long-suffering and merciful unto us. So therefore, we are going to turn around and not faint. We are going to persevere. We are going to continue. Verse number two, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And this is important too. It says that we renounce the hidden things of dishonesty. We don't walk in craftiness or handling the word of God deceitfully. And this is just kind of a side note. This wasn't in my notes to go over it. But when we go out and preach the gospel, you should never, ever be using the word of God deceitfully. And what I mean by that is taking verses out of context just to try to prove some point. And you know what? I don't care if the point that you're trying to make is true. Don't back up a true, a true point with verses that do not apply to what you're trying to say. That is only going to cause hurt and damage. It doesn't matter if what you're saying is true. Don't back it up with verses that aren't talking about that. Make sure you understand the context of the verses that you use to try to preach to people. Because if someone goes back and checks you on it, and they say, oh, well, I can't believe this guy because he's using this verse for me, and it has nothing to do with that. So why would they believe anything else that you say? So we need to be careful and not use the word of God deceitfully. And we're not trying to trick people or hoodwink people into getting saved. That's not what it's all about. We care about the truth. We want honesty and reality and truthfulness. And that's why when we go out, we're also not just trying to get people to repeat some prayer. Amen. That's not soul winning. Right. We're not just trying to see what we can do to get someone to, let me just see if I can get them to repeat this prayer. That's meaningless unless you can get through to their heart. We care about being true and genuine and bringing the truth to these people so that they can see and understand and believe. I'm not using deceit or trickery or trying to pull anything over on people. There's plenty of false prophets out there doing that already because they don't care about the people. They care about bringing them into church and getting their money. But that's not what we're all about. These people can never come to our church. Of course, we want them to come. We want them to grow. We want them to get disciples. We want them to go out and bring the gospel to even more people. But the most important thing that we focus on when we go out soul winning is their soul. They're understanding the truth. They're putting their faith from their heart on Jesus Christ. So in order for us to do that, we got to make sure we're not handling the word of God deceitfully. We're not walking in craftiness. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves every man's conscience in the sight of God. Verse number three, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. If our gospel is hid, if you, if you hide the gospel, look, if you're here today and you're saved, you've already received the gospel. You know the gospel. It's already saved your soul. You can live your whole life and never tell anyone else about the gospel and you still go to heaven because God saved your soul. Amen. But if your gospel is hid, it's hid to them that are lost. And what happens to them that are lost? They're going to hell. I don't know about you, but that doesn't make me feel very easy. That doesn't sit well with me to think that I'm sitting on eternal life this great gift how awesome is that i didn't have to do anything for it 
yay me, I'm so happy I got this, and not tell anyone else about it. You have that type of attitude where you don't want to let other people know about such an amazing gift that's free to them. It's not like, oh, no, I have it, and I don't want anyone else to have it because you're going to have to take mine away from me. No, you get to keep yours and tell other people that they can get the same thing too. It's available for them. You don't have to hide it or hoard it away. But someone who's not willing to do that is a person that hates people. And let that sink in. If you're not willing to tell other people about the good news, about that free gift, about eternal life, about how you can just avoid being tortured and tormented and in flames for an eternity, how you can just avoid that, if you can't tell people that, you hate people. You hate them. There's no other explanation for it. Because that's pretty severe. Eternity in hell. Yeah. 